Hello, I am Dr. Ilango Sethu, Transplant Surgeon at Royal Care Super Specialty Hospital at Coimbatore. We are doing this video series to educate our patients who are planned for liver transplantation. And in today's video, we are going to discuss how we do the liver transplant operative procedure and what you should expect in the first few days after your liver transplantation. Liver transplantation is a very major operation. It is done by a team, not by an individual. There are lots of key members. Normally, there are about two to three surgeons involved in the transplantation procedure. There are two or three anesthesiologists. There is one hepatologist and a large number of nurses and paramedical staff involved in your care. The liver transplant operation is an open operation. So today, I'm going to tell you about the recipient operation. The recipient operation is usually done as an open procedure in which we use a T-shaped incision or a rooftop incision to open the abdomen. Sometimes thinner individuals can make do with a smaller incision. Once we go inside the abdomen, we remove the old liver and we put in the new liver. The old liver removal is the key part of the operation because the pressure inside the liver is very high and the blood clotting parameters are abnormal. This part of the operation is considered to be the most difficult and possibly dangerous part of the operation. We divide all the attachments of the liver and then the liver has got blood vessels that supply the blood to flow through the liver which is of two types the portal vein which takes blood from the intestines and your digested food towards the liver and the hepatic artery which takes the blood from the heart to the liver so that takes the oxygenated liver these all go through a certain portion of the liver called the liver hilum and uh, the job of the transplant team is to remove the connecting portions from the liver hilum and remove the liver entirely. The liver is connected to the main vein of the body called the inferior vena cava on the back side through three hepatic veins and a variable number of small veins called short hepatic veins. The surgeon will remove all these veins as a part of the explant operation. This part of the operation takes about two to three hours and can be associated with major blood loss. This is the time when we ask for people with spontaneous bacterial peritonitis where your acetic fluid got infected. Those are the people who will have more difficult operations. Once the liver is removed, we prepare the connecting blood vessels to receive the new liver. Normally, we can do two types of donations. One is the disease donation and the living donation. Today, for this example, we are going to talk about disease donation. This organ will be procured from a brain dead donor from nearby and then on after receiving the new liver, we do a preparation called the back bench. The back bench allows us to prepare the veins and the artery and the bile duct in the graft. So there are normally four structures that we actually connect inside the liver during the transplantation. So we do all that preparation in the graft at the bench side when the liver is kept in cold solutions. Once the liver is prepared, we do these four connections are in the form of tubes. So inferior vena cava or the blood that takes that goes towards the heart from the liver that is done first followed by the portal vein and then the hepatic artery and then the lastly the bile duct. See normally just like any plumbing, the any tube connection can have problems. One, it can have leaks. Second, it can get blocked. So in surgery, the block is called thrombosis. In the first week of transplantation, depending on the character of the blood vessel vessels in the patient as well as the blood vessels in the graft and a lot of other factors like blood clotting parameters how they improve everything can lead to clotting of the veins and the arteries so normally a clotting can be very silent so we always do scans regularly to pick up these complications these complications once detected can be corrected by either interventional radiological procedure or by surgery the surgeon will discuss both these aspects with the family before we make a final decision. Sometimes the clotting will destroy the new liver completely. This now happens in about 5 to 10 percentage of the patients. We are able to correct most of them but sometimes if the, in the unfortunate event of the liver getting completely damaged we can plan a retransplantation. The government has got special rules for allocation in these patients. The third major complication is bile duct complication. The bile duct complication can be again a leak or a block. In the early part of the surgery, this block is very rare. It usually happens after 
three months. In the initial phase, leaks happen more often. Over many years of experience, we have reduced the risk of leak from the biliary tree, but this still is the most difficult part of the liver to heal. So one should expect complications all the time. And even though we take a lot of precautions for the same, we still find once in a while that these patients biliary leaks. The rest of the complications can be bleeding. The major life-threatening complication is the new graft not functioning, which is called the primary non-function. The primary non-function indicates that the liver is not appropriately received by the recipient's body and it is not functioning. Normally, this requires a retransplantation and that is the only way we can save the life of the patient. So, to understand this better, I always tell the family that when we connect the new liver, the first blood that goes through the liver's portal vein into the liver and then onwards towards the heart, that time some patients can develop severe cardiac problems. That is the reason why we check all the heart parameters before your transplantation. This happens in about 1% of the patients. When this happens, the blood inside the heart clots completely and can lead to sudden death. So that risk is completely irreversible. There is no science to correct this, though anecdotal reports are there. This is the main risk in a diseased donor liver transplantation. In a living donor liver transplantation, this risk is very rare. So this happens in the first minute after connection which we call reperfusion. After connecting this in one hour we will know whether the liver is accepted and how the liver has started functioning by noting the production of bile. When this happens one of the team members will come and talk to the family about how the liver transplant is going. From then on it may take a couple of hours for the surgery to finish. We usually shift the patient back to the transplant ICU on day one and on day one we do some blood tests to find out how the liver is accepted by your body and we also do scans to find out how our connections are working either there is a leak or a block so this will continue for one week at the end of one week most of the time the patient will be comfortable eating normally the liver functions will improve they will feel much better they will be coming out of the bed and they can talk to their family after one week we usually shift the patient to the ward from one week to one month is the period where you have bacterial infections in our country we have the challenge of multi-drug resistant organisms. These organisms can become very severe in a transplant patient and a lot of them depends on the pre-transplant care of the patient. When these multi-drug organisms are found, we will change the antibiotics and treat you appropriately. The main risk in these three weeks is bacterial infection. Once one month is over, the period from one month to three months is a time frame when your liver completely settles in your body and you will be going home. At this time, the key infections are viral infections. Normally, cytomegalovirus is the key factor which we are worried about. So cytomegalovirus infections and sometimes PJP in a very rare circumstances can all appear at this time. We will be able to manage them. We have very good drugs for the management of these conditions. The only requirement is that the patient follow our instructions. Once three months is over, your liver actually is very well settled and we will try to reduce the number of anti-rejection medications that are required for the patient. And from three medications or four medications, will come down to two medications at this time. From this point in time till one year, we will gradually reduce the immunosuppression and monitor you every month. So this is the normal course of events so that at the end of one year, the patient becomes completely normal, returning to productive and active life in the community. Obviously, there are many complications that can occur in a liver transplantation. The normal complication rate is about 15%. The risk of death in a liver transplant patient in one year is about roughly 10 to 15 percentage. The causes are very variable. We have seen patients suffering from coronary artery disease, cardiac problems, renal failure. We've seen patients developing severe infections, severe rejection that can lead to loss of graft. There are so many factors. So the cause of death in liver transplant patients is multifactorial, but it averages around 10 to 15 percentage in all the transplant centers throughout the world. So this this risk you must understand. If there are any questions, so feel free to ask any questions that may be in your mind after seeing this video. Thank you.